Hi everyone, good afternoon, and thanks for joining us today for Driftwood's webinar and Q&A session with CrowdStreet. My name is John Robertson, Senior Investor Relations Manager here at CrowdStreet, and I'll be the moderator of today's call. Uh, we have several members of uh, Driftwood's team today who will give a quick introductions uh, on themselves here in a moment. Uh, we're here to discuss the Metro Atlanta Fairfield Inn and Suites portfolio, uh, which is up on the CrowdStreet Marketplace. Um, as you should know, everyone's in a listen-only mode, so as you do have questions, either throughout the presentation or during the Q&A portion of the call, please just type those questions into the questions box. Um, I'll ask them on your behalf in the order that they come in. Um, and with that, I'm happy to turn it over to the Driftwood team for the presentation. Thanks, guys. Hello, everyone. Thank you for participating in the webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Carlos Rodriguez, and I'm the CEO of uh, Driftwood Acquisitions and Development. Uh, the acronym is DAD. Uh, with me, uh, we have... Sofia Pitaluga, I'm an associate here on the acquisitions team. Um, kind of underwrote this deal along with um, the rest of the acquisitions team. Pete Majeski, Director of Investor Relations. I oversee uh, our Investor Relations program here at DAD. And you have Johanna Rodriguez, uh, Managing Director of Acquisitions for DAD. So um, this deal is a deal that interests us a lot from the very beginning uh, for several reasons. Uh, these three hotels were part of a six-hotel portfolio, and we were able to separate them, uh, acquire all six, but have an investor of ours buy three of them and for us to keep the three that we like the most. So these three are the three hotels that we like the most out of, all, uh, out of the six that were for sale. Um, one is in uh, Buckhead, the other one is in Perimeter in Atlanta, and the other one is in Alpharetta, uh, also, you know, in the suburbs of Atlanta. As you guys know, uh, the Atlanta market has been a very hot market. Uh, it's been growing by leaps and bounds. It's a very, very strong market, and, and these three hotels are in excellent locations. Um, the overall... Projected distribution uh, for the for the portfolio is a 9.4% dividend cash on cash, uh, and that's what we project to be giving distributions uh, throughout the life of the investment. Um, the whole period is a three to seven year period. Uh, we own to write everything for five years, but if things uh, you know proceed at a faster pace, you know there might be an opportunity for us to sell at an earlier date. Uh, and make you know higher returns, or if for whatever reason we, we think it's best for the investors to hold it a little bit longer, you know that's why we say seven years. So the whole period is three to seven years, uh, with the average expected to be five. Um, cash multiple on this one is 1.82, and the IRR on this deal is 14.9%. Uh, that's in page four of of the presentation. If you guys uh, skip to page uh, six of the presentation, um, on, on page uh, six, you will see basically, you know, the reasons why we, we bought these hotels. First of all, the hotels were fully renovated already. They had spent over $8.1 million uh, on the hotels. The hotels are very much in pristine conditions. They're in really good conditions. So the only PIP that we need to do, the product improvement plan that we need to do on these hotels is uh, 1.184 million, um, which is very little. So there should be no impact to the hotels as a result of the renovations. Um, and as I said, the hotels are in really good conditions. Uh, location, um, the locations couldn't be any better. I mean, these are the three prime sub-markets of Atlanta, uh, and we'll go into them as we speak about each hotel, but Buckhead is a very high-end location, is a you know, financial district. Uh, Perimeter is another really good location, and Alpharetta is also a very good location. You know, the brands are, you know, are all, you know, Fairfields, a very, you know, premier brand uh, of Marriott, um, and it has a very good, strong in-place cash flow. Um, Going into uh, into the hotels themselves, uh, the uh, in slide eight, uh, the Fairfield in uh, Buckhead. Uh, this hotel was built in 1997, and it was renovated 
um, a year and a half ago in 2017, it has 115 keys, um, and it has 92 parking spaces. Uh, total acres is 1.282 uh, acres. Um, then the perimeter one is in, in slide 15 is the uh, the, the Fairfield Perimeter uh, Center, and that's right next to uh, State Farm's campus. Um, just for you guys to know, the State Farm campus is being expanded. Uh, it's a 1.2 billion dollar uh, development that they're doing in that in, in in there, and is literally right next to the hotel. But this hotel was also built in 1997, and it was renovated, fully renovated in 2016. It's 114 rooms, uh, 64 parking spaces, and uh, the demand for this hotel should be tremendous once the expansion for State Farm is completed in the next couple of years. Um, and obviously we have the Fairfield and Alpharetta in page 22, um, which is basically uh, total keys. This is the smallest one of all the hotels. It's 88 rooms. Uh, with 92 parking spots, 1.7 acres. Um, again, built in 1995 and fully renovated in 2016. Um, here you can see in, in, in slide number 28, you can see all the renovations that were done on each hotel. Um, and you can see how much was spent on our, each hotel, you know, $2.9 million in Buckhead, $2.9 million were spent in uh, Perimeter Center, and $2.2 million was spent in Alpharetta already. And that's why we only need to do $1.1 million uh, of renovations now that we took over. Um, now, let, let's talk about the market for a second. And for that, we can go to uh, slides uh, 31 and 32, page 31 and page 32. Uh, Atlanta per se um, is, you know, basically the state has been known as the number one state for business for the last three years in a row. 26 of uh, the Fortune 500 and 1000 headquarters are placed in Atlanta. Uh, it has the third highest population growth uh, from 2016 through 2017. Um, it is the number one busiest airport in the world. Um, and in slide 32, and this is the part that is most impressive, uh, the mark of the market. Look at the GDP growth. In 2000, the you know they, they had it was a 200 uh, billion, and and now uh, basically in 2016, 2017, it had reached uh, 2017 it had reached 385.5 billion. In other words, from 2000 to 2017 the GDP of Atlanta almost doubled. Um, and the population is growing as this, as this slide shows. So when you, when you have a market that is growing at this level, that is this strong, and, and you have three excellent locations, the three premier locations, which is Perimeter, Buckhead, and Alpharetta, uh, these hotels are amazing locations. You know, it, it bodes very well for our investment. Um, and then in slide 33, uh, slide 34, um, you can see basically what's been done, you know, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium that was uh, developed, uh, the Phillips Arena, the CNN Center, and, you know, some of the other things that are happening in, in Atlanta. <coughs> Sorry for that. Um, in slide 54, uh, you can see the purchase price uh, of 136,278. Total basis going in is 154,000, which is quite frankly well below uh, replacement value. It's a very good price going in per key of 154,000. Um, and 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 we structure the debt with uh, with um, with CMBS, a 10-year CMBS uh, for basically. Uh, Debt as a total percentage of basis going in is 62.1%. Um, I'm sorry, could you, could you tell me what slide, uh, what slide would you like me to jump to? Okay, sorry, that's the slide 54. Slide 54, okay. 
I was talking about um, basically the purchase price and the, the uh, total basis going in, which is quite frankly well below replacement. So we have three hotels in a very strong market that is growing, uh, you know, at an, an amazing pace with, uh, you know, where there's a lot of Fortune 500 companies in three great locations and that are in pristine conditions and that we're buying it below replacement. So the story here is a very good story. Um, and, and we got, you know, the debt in place, so, you know, 10 year fixed uh, rate debt. Um, and then a little bit about us, you know, in slide 58 about Driftwood Hospitality Management. Basically, we manage hotels all across the country. Uh, we manage all types of hotels from limited service to full service hotels. Um, and basically, we used to be the arm in, in many, many years ago of Lehman Brothers, the hotel arm, the hotel platform, where basically when, when hotels got in trouble, when Lehman loaned money, basically we were the ones that came in and fixed the hotels and managed the hotels. So we, we've uh, managed hotels for uh, many institutional investors. Uh, we've managed hotels for Apollo Global Management. We've managed hotels for uh, Carlisle Group for Fidelity Investments. Uh, we've managed hotels for um, Cross Harbor and many very well-known institutional investors, um, and also for you know for high net worth individuals and for banks when 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 hotels have gotten in trouble. So we've basically been sort of like the doctors uh, of hotels all across the country. So we have a vast experience in the in the business. I would like to guys uh, for you to visit our webpage of Driftwood Hospitality Management, and you will see um, the hotels that we manage and that we have in our portfolio. Um, and uh, you know we're just very excited to have the opportunity to be able to manage these properties and to be able to offer these properties uh, for investment to to your group. Um, the way we do business is basically, and this is uh, one of the things that differ, differentiates us also from uh, uh, many groups, is that, um, and that's in uh, basically you can go to slide 62, is that uh, we purchase. Um, we first purchase in, in the hotel ourselves. So we own it 100% ourselves first. We close on the loan, uh, we, we, we obtain everything, and only after we've closed is that we syndicate uh, pieces to our investors. So we need to feel very good about a deal because we own it 100% ourselves first. And it's only when our investors come in that we dilute a little bit from ourselves from, from it, but we always retain a very large percentage of ownership. Um, but, you know, it's a little bit of a different approach from other hoteliers where they need the money to be able to close. Here we close, we fund it ourselves, and then we turn around and sell pieces to accredited investors like yourselves. Um, and with that, on, uh, Johanna or Sophia or Peter, is there anything that we're missing? Oh, by the way, uh, Peter Majeski is our Director of Investor Relations. If any of you decides to invest, uh, he uh, will answer any questions you may have at any time. Uh, he basically receives emails from all of our investors and, and he's very prompt in responding to them. Uh, any questions that they may have as to their particular investments. Any other information that we should be giving? So why don't we open up for questions now? Okay, great. Thanks for that overview. Uh, as a reminder to the audience, for anyone who may have uh, joined us late, um, we please just type your questions into the questions box and I will ask them on your behalf. Um, I am going to update this page here. Um, I believe the invest now button has been activated, so we are formally accepting offers at this point. Um, so, uh, first question is about uh, uh, debt. Um, do you have you secured the same debt for all three properties, or is there different? Uh, do you have different loans for each asset? Each each asset uh, is a separate loan, but it's already been secured and, and 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 done. So all the loans are closed, but each asset, each entity is a, a single purpose entity, is a SPE. You know, so each entity is it's. Each hotel is owned by a separate entity, and each hotel has a separate loan. But then it all rolls up into a holding entity that is the one that you guys will be investing in. Um, but each property, and we did that, you know, 
basically to secure everybody to make sure that if for whatever reason there's a problem with one hotel, that doesn't affect the other two hotels. Okay, and then on the exit, uh, are you assuming the buyer would assume the CMBS loan or would they secure new debt? What we structure always with a CMBS loan is in year five, um, the new buyer, if we decide to sell from year five to year 10, uh, the new buyer can add on debt. In other words, with, uh, there's a possibility of having uh, mezzanine loans added to it. So in that case, a buyer can come in, assume the loan, and in addition to assuming the loan, taking on new debt, um, in addition to the existing debt. So there's two possibilities uh, for a new buyer. One is to assume the loan and take on new debt, or the other possibility is that the buyer basically defeases the, the, the CMBS note and pays it off okay, and gets a new it. loan. Okay, that makes sense. Um, let's see, next question is, you know, what do occupancy rates look like for the surrounding areas? And do you see any upside from the current um, 75% rate? Yeah, um, we definitely see a lot of upside. And, and the reason I'm going to uh, I'm going to use the one that, you know that is easiest to explain the upside, um, which is perimeter. In perimeter, you have State Farm right next door, where you know they're adding you know, hundreds of thousands of square feet of class A office building. You know, we are the hotel literally right next door. I mean, um, we could not be even, you know, closer than what we are. So with that said, as they add people and as the offices expand, the demand for that hotel uh, will be tremendous. Therefore, there's not only an opportunity for higher occupancy, but there's also a, a much higher opportunity for, um a, a, a higher ADR, average daily rate, uh, in, in that particular hotel. Um, the other one that, quite frankly, in our underwriting, we were extremely conservative was Alpharetta. Um, if you guys look at the um, uh, what we did in Alpharetta, basically, uh, we brought it down currently. The forecasted for, for the, for, you know, the, the, the occupancy was 73%. And we basically brought down Alpharetta to 68% in, uh, in this first year, and we don't get it back to 73% until 2023. So in Alpharetta, we were extremely conservative because there's some new supply coming in. Uh, so, but there's a great opportunity there because we actually were very conservative in the underwriting and we, you know, basically underwrote it taking a hit on the occupancy. But we believe that that's a very conservative approach and that there's room for, for higher occupancy there. Um, and in Buckhead, I mean, there's just not more land to build, uh, plain and simple. I mean, so the, the, the Buckhead area, uh, if anything, there's a great opportunity for somebody to just buy us to, to do something else with it because, quite frankly, there's just not more land. It's a great location. It's location, location, location. Buckhead is like the epicenter of where the financial district of Atlanta is. Um, so, you know, again, that hotel will do uh, very, very well. Uh, and we're only projecting it to go from the 75% to 76%. Again, we're very conservative on, in the underwriting in this particular deal. Okay, great. That's helpful. Um, any new supply under construction or in the pipeline in these in this market? The only one of concern is the one I mentioned, which is Alpharetta. Alpharetta does have uh, potential new supply, and that's why we, uh, you know, took a hit on, on on the underwriting with respect to current current uh, numbers. There is a courtyard, 150 room courtyard coming in into Alpharetta um, in this, actually this month. Then there is in June, a 132 even hotel. Uh, there's a home two also projected for the end of the year. And then a couple years down the road, there's a, a Hilton in Windward Park in the
the Alpharetta area. So Alpharetta will have new supply, uh, and that's why we underwrote it conservatively and, and brought down and make it take a hit. Um, but but the market is a strong market, it's a growing market, and we believe that the that the new supply will be um, will be fully uh, absorbed. Okay, thanks. Next question is, what markup on property acquisition, if any, do you charge investors when investors are brought into a hotel? That's a very good question. That we get it a lot. Um, basically, um, there's two fees that, that we charge, uh, and that's it. We pass it at cost, at our cost, but we do charge two fees, and the two fees that we charge are the 2% um, the, uh, acquisition fee and then the 2% uh, syndication fee. Um, and basically that is to cover our overhead. The 2% acquisition fee is basically for every deal that we do like this one, we, we spend an, our time and money uh, and traveling all across the country to look for deals. Um, so that 2% basically goes to cover our overhead for purchasing and looking at deals that are dead deals that at the end don't happen. And then the syndication fee is exactly for this, to help us cover um the um uh, uh, help us cover the the marketing process of syndicating the the hotels and the legal expenses incurred uh in syndicating these hotels and registering it to be able to syndicate them so those are the fees that we charge um and and then obviously there's the, the expense of 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 uh, of uh marketing it um so, to to you know to groups like yourselves, but there's no additional, and that's fully. By the way, all these numbers are fully uh, shown in the subscription agreements. Uh, they're fully reflected and baked in into all the numbers that we have in the IRRs and in projections. So that's fully disclosed. Um, but outside of those fees, there is absolutely no markup, no change in the difference on the pricing from what we got. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and while we're on the topic of projections and financials, why don't I just pull up here the uh, the summary of terms, and then we'll flip to the uh, the financials too, as well as you know when uh, when distributions are expected to commence and, and the percentage rate on that. So let's first cover summary of terms and the uh, waterfall distribution. If you could just walk investors through this calculation, I think that'd be helpful. Sure. Um, basically. Um, for the first, you know, for you to get your capital back as an investor and your first 10% uh, return on your money, a 10% IRR, um, it goes 100% to the investor, um, you know, to where the investor is. So capital and 10% return is 100% to the investor. After the investor got a, the, its capital back and a 10% return on its money, then the excess, we get 20% to us and 80% to the investors until we reach a 16% IRR. Um, once we reach a 16% IRR and the investor has received the 16%, then from then on, we get a 30% of the excess. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and then, you know, and 70% and goes to the investor. Now, once the investor has reached a 20% return, on, on its money, so his money back and 20%, then from that moment forward, uh, it's 50-50, 50% to the investor and 50% to us. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then the next is, I'll pull up the financials tab here. Um, it sounds like distributions are expected to, I mean, since these are cash flowing properties and, and doing fairly well, right, you're in a position to make a distribution um, relatively soon. Is that, is that correct? correct? And then I've here highlighted the uh, percentage um, forecast for the out years. That is correct. Well, these hotels will be in a position to distribute starting this first quarter uh, of, uh, of 2019. So usually we distribute monies um, the third week following the end of the quarter. So for example, for the first quarter of March 31st, we will be distributing around April 21st. Uh, for the quarter that ends on June 30th, we'll be distributing on July 21st. Uh, for the quarter ending September 30th, we'll distribute on October 21st. 
And again, for the quarter that ends in December, uh, we will distribute it on January 21st. But, but yes, these hotels are cash flowing properties that should cash flow very, very well. And you would get the first distribution starting March 31st. Okay. Do you want to talk a little bit about the equity uh, raise here? Obviously, a 16.6 million requirement. Um, how's how's capital raising been going on on your end? And you know, obviously, Crowd Street only has a small portion of this 16 million. Um, you know, potentially a little bit more as we continue to raise funds, but. Uh, just talk a little bit about the feedback you've received from existing, you know, friends and family and, and other partners. Um, this this deal is going has been literally flying. Um, uh, we, we we basically only have left to place about five million and a half um, of the uh, of, of 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 all the money that we came out to raise. So what we have left in the kitty to 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 sell is five and a half million uh and we just opened it up to the public uh about a month ago so we expect this this uh this subscription to be done fully fully syndicated call it within the next uh 30 days uh 30 to 40 days tops it'll be fully syndicated okay great thanks um next question is uh is uh is the expected performance and distribution rates for this offering similar to other uh investments in hotels that you've done in the past yes um i would say you know the one thing with these hotels that i do like um is this is a very safe bet in my mind in my personal opinion and the reason that i say that is just because it's three small hotels marriott branded um is sort of like no brainers, easy to operate in three excellent locations. So, uh, you know, this is if you're investing in the hotel industry and you like the hotel industry, this is as 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 good as it gets. But having said that, yes, this is a typical profile of deals that we look for, and the typical projections that we do and that we provide and that we give to our investors. Our one of our hurdles is to try to give at least a nine to 10% return on cash on cash to the investors from day one. Um, this, this one clearly meets it. And, and to give you know, around a 15% IRR to our investors net to them after all fees. And this one clearly meets it. And quite frankly, this one, if anything, I think we were very conservative on, in the underwriting. Okay, perfect. Let's see. Um, next question is: Distributions drop significantly in Q4 of each year. Is that due to seasonality? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mhm. Mm um, next question is: Can you talk a little bit about uh, the target customer and guest of the Fairfield brand? Uh, is this more of a business or a tourist type of traveler? No, these three hotels uh, are, you know, I would say in the vast majority business uh, due to their locations. And, and I think, you know, one one aspect that, that really attracts us to the select service space is over the uh, past few years, you've seen uh, travelers' tastes and preferences change. They want a clean room. They want a free breakfast. You know, they don't want to be eating in the in the hotel restaurant. And this, this kind of brand, this category killing brand of Marriott's really kind of serves that guest. They have a clean room. They can, they can pop into town, you know, have hot water, clean room, free breakfast, and go about their day. Um, and, you know, with, with, a, with 100, 300 room, rooms-focused hotels, you know, I think that these are the, kind of the ideal kind of product that today's business trends, uh, travelers uh, utilize. Yeah, the, 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 these hotels were made for the road warriors. So the, the, the locations that they have, the type of brand that it is, and uh, and uh, and the and the uh, and what is surrounding these hotels, is really is for the road warriors that are traveling on business um, a large portion of the year. Okay, great. Um, I just pulled up the sources and uses here. Just just didn't know if there's any uh, kind of key line item that you wanted to um, highlight. Um, as you capitalize the deal, is there anything that kind of stands out that you want to reference? 
I mean, not really. I mean, this, this is the, 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 the key thing here is, is the total basis going in that it's, you know, under replacement value and that it's uh, in, in pristine conditions and in a good location. But sources and uses, frankly, I mean, you see where the money is going in. Uh, very little uh, money for, for uh, PIP. It was $1,184,000. Uh, you're seeing the purchase price is the vast majority, $43,200,000. Um, and, uh, you know, everything else is very normal. Okay. Uh, one of the things in key money, you know, from the management company, we got uh, 110000 in key money. Uh, basically, it's, uh, we, we got the management company to pay us that to get the contracts. Okay. Got it. Well, see, at this time, we don't have um, any additional questions uh, in the queue. Um, as, as you mentioned earlier on the call, um, Peter's been great about responding to questions. So as investors do have follow-up questions that they may not ask on today's call, we do encourage you to use this questions feature. Uh, this sends a question directly to the sponsor as well as CrowdStreet. And, uh, you know, again, Peter's been great about responding uh, quickly and thoroughly to investors. So. Um, please continue to use that feature and ask questions about the deal. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess there's really nothing else to cover on our. Right, we've activated the Invest Now button. Um, CrowdStreet's allocation is is relatively small, so I think it's on, on our side at least it's going to fill up quickly. Um, you've got great traction of that 16 million um, already raised. I think you referenced roughly 5 million is left. So um, with that, I think I'll just hand it back over to you for any closing yeah. and final comments yeah thank you um you know the, the my final comment is look um do your due diligence check us out look at driftwood go go to the web page for us uh you know take a look at what we do and and how we do it there's two different web pages one is uh you know the driftwood hospitality management and the other one is for driftwood acquisitions and development and and you'll see our history and you'll see our track record um you know feel free to ask around the industry about us um, call marriott if you want you know you can check us out i mean we've been around for quite some time and 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 we've done plenty of these deals um and then take a look at you know research atlanta research atlanta and what's happening in the whole area i mean and research buckhead research um uh, perimeter and Alpharetta. And uh, I think that the story that you'll see with respect to the location of these hotels, the condition of these hotels, the brand that we have, the management company, the sponsor, I think it's a very solid story. And I think that you'll, you know, uh, be very satisfied with your investment in this deal. But feel free, as I do as much research and due diligence as possible, ask us any questions. We don't mind. Um, I mean, our idea is to have a long-term relationship and friendship with every investor of ours. So, you know, feel free to contact us and contact Peter and, uh, and you know, ask away. And, and thank you very much for your time and, and for uh, taking this, uh, cons you know, considering this, this, uh, this investment opportunity, of which we're very happy to uh, provide to you guys. Wonderful. Thank you, and thanks, everyone, for joining the call today. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah.